Could a human being survive a creeper explosion? I was thinking about this recently as I had a nightmare that my girlfriend had turned into a creeper and blew up my diamonds. Fortunately, I don't have a girlfriend, so I knew it wasn't real, but that got me thinking. If creepers did exist, would humans be able to survive the explosions? What would it take? Let's get into it. First, we need to calculate the power of a normal creeper explosion. To do this, we'll be looking at the explosion radius of creepers. For my data, I'll be using the official Mobistieri page on the creeper, which displays a TNT block-esque mechanism and states it can produce a force slightly weaker than that of a normal TNT block. According to the Minecraft wiki and other sources, the Minecraft TNT explosion has an explosion power of 4, while the creeper has an explosion power of 3, thus the slightly weaker is, at least in my opinion, a decent bit smaller. This calculation seems fairly accurate given my own observations of the creeper and TNT as I'll show here. Thus, we can start with the approximation that creepers explode with 75% the force of a TNT block. However, we must determine the real-world equivalent of our TNT block. A seemingly foolish way to do this would be to simply take the given size of Minecraft blocks, which is 1 meter cubed, and calculate how many kilograms of TNT would occur in that space. Taking the density of TNT to be 1.65 grams per centimeter cubed, we can convert to kilograms and get 1,650 kilograms of TNT, which is quite an impressive amount for what seems like a small block. Now that we have a kilogram amount comes the tricky part. Explosions are fairly complex and often unpredictable, so for our purposes, approximations need to be made. First, we can use the fact that in one kilogram of TNT, there's about 4.8 million joules, yielding with our calculated mass a total of 8 billion joules, or 8 gigajoules. For context, one joule is classically told to be equivalent to lifting an apple one meter, so in this case, it'd feel like the TNT is lifting 8 billion apples. A better contextualization, since we are orders of magnitude above a singular joule, is that of a relatively weak nuclear bomb, for example the Davy Crockett, which was reported to have an energy yield of about 84 gigajoules, so about 10 times our TNT. The Hawkeye viewers out there might have noticed this seems a bit more severe than the TNT in Minecraft. Even if it is 10 times smaller, you wouldn't expect the explosion radius to even be comparable to a nuclear weapon, even a small one. Using an explosion damage calculator to find the blast radius and some other facts, we can get a more precise measure. I chose to use an explosion damage calculator as it takes into account a lot of experimental data, which is really useful as explosions can be incredibly unstable, and so experimental results are usually the best to use. The calculator should be reasonably accurate for our purposes, since the creeper will produce no shrapnel, assuming it has soft skin. Obviously, if you make the assumption that the creeper is a golem of some sort, it will produce some shrapnel from like the parts flying around, but I'm going under the assumption that it's either a creature or a plant, and it'll only produce a burning sensation from its skin debris, which wouldn't increase the lethality by as much as, you know, a frag grenade increases its lethality with shrapnel. However, I will validate the calculator using a commonly utilized estimation technique called the inverse square law. This law applies in a lot of cases, but specifically for an explosion, it basically states that the further out you go from an explosion, the damage done will drop by the square of the distance. Thus, we can estimate using a known weapon like the Davy Crockett's energy and radius and compare that with our calculated energy. Doing this using values from Wikipedia, I found an estimate of about 50 meters to be fatal, which is fairly similar to the calculator's 27 meters. Obviously, they are a bit far apart, but this could be explained by the fact that TNT is not nuclear, and explosions inherently will have different fatal distances, as an important factor in an explosion is the rate at which it expels this energy, and our estimation cannot take this into account. Thus it makes sense, TNT, which is a generally weaker explosive compared to nuclear weaponry, would have a lower fatal range than the estimate. Additionally, in either case, this range is much too big. When one TNT block goes off, people are instantly dying 30 blocks away. So we need another real-life equivalent, as otherwise our answer would simply be, yeah, you wouldn't survive, because it's a new... <laughs> I don't want to use the explosion damage to Minecraft players, though, as then we would be effectively calculating how to survive this in Minecraft, which isn't really the question, so instead we make an observation. Minecraft TNT doesn't actually appear to be real TNT, either in its power and its visual appearance. See, what Minecraft TNT visually appears to be is 16 sticks of dynamite, which is quite different to a solid 1 meter cubed of TNT. This is actually very common in media to name pretty much any explosive TNT, as other shows have done this, very commonly also with things that appear more like dynamite than TNT. 
I imagine they did this initially as Dynamite is visually more interesting than TNT for things like cartoons and stuff, and as it became very common, Minecraft having a more cartoonish style followed suit. Additionally, it makes more sense since the crafting recipe for TNT in Minecraft uses sand and gunpowder, where this crafting recipe may seem weird for TNT, for Dynamite it makes a lot of sense since in Dynamite you use a stabilizer and nitroglycerin, where effectively the stabilizer prevents the nitroglycerin from just blowing you up randomly as you don't, you don't want to blow yourself up. And Interestingly enough, yellow sand was one of the first stabilizers ever used. However, I, I don't think gunpowder was very common, but you know, the idea is there. <laughs> now we have a new approximation, 16 sticks of dynamite, but we need to clarify what we mean by a stick of dynamite and find how much force that is going to exert. The latter is a bit easier to answer as we can use TNT equivalents, which is known for dynamite, to be 1.25, which basically states 1 kilogram of dynamite is as powerful in an explosion as about 1.25 kilograms of TNT. Now for the size. You know, I've seen some pretty big sticks, so what does stick of dynamite really mean? Is it 5 inches way too long? Or 1 inch, a respectable length? Or even smaller, which is also satisfactory? Here, there's a bit of debate about what is the average for a stick of dynamite, but I'll use what I found some sources stated, which was 8 inches long, way too long, and about 1 and a quarter in diameter, giving a mass of about 200 grams. Since we have 16 of these, we multiply and get 3.2 kilograms of dynamite. Combining with our TNT equivalents, we get that this amount of dynamite is equal to about 4 kilograms of TNT, which is noticeably smaller than earlier when our TNT kilogram was in the thousands. I like this number personally, as 4 is my favorite number, so it's cool it worked out to this. However, we must remember earlier that we found a creeper explosion to be equal to 75% the power of a TNT block, so we actually have the equivalent of 3 kilograms of TNT. Plugging this in, we get a fatal distance of about 3 meters, with a bunch of other data. This result is a lot better than the mini nuke we found before. However, it's still a little far off, as in Minecraft, a fatal distance from a creeper, even without armor, is less than 2 blocks, like around 1 or so. So the fatal distance is like two to three times bigger. Though to be fair, the blocky builds maybe are just better and more muscular from carrying those stacks of wood and cobblestone, which makes sense since most humans are sedentary. Like most mans can't even get up from their couch. So like, how are they going to handle the explosion? Now we have our main answer. You could survive a creeper explosion if you were more than about 3.5 meters away. However, you'll experience severe damage and burns in this rain still, especially if there's any loose rocks around that can act as shrapnel. But in the case of the Minecraft Creeper specifically, a human would not survive it normally, since Creepers explode when they are within a 3 block radius of a target, which is decently within the fatal distance. However, if you make a bit of distance or put a barrier between you and the Creeper, this fatal radius can be reduced substantially. So long as the barrier isn't made of glass or something, it gets destroyed and just stabs you. <laughs> if you make it out about 10 meters, you're unlikely to die or get fatally injured at all, but the explosion will generate enough noise to still rupture most eardrums, which can be really debilitating, though usually it does heal so long as it wasn't too bad of a rupture. Another thing you may think of, like in Minecraft to protect you, is armor. However, is armor even effective in real life against explosions? Obviously, armor will protect you from things like swords or, if it's bulletproof, well, bullets, <laughs> but the primary way armor does this is through dispersing the force. See, take for example the sword. It's exerting a lot of force on its fairly thin end, and since all that force is being channeled into a small point, it can pierce the skin and do a lot of damage. However, with armor, this piercing can be prevented, and the force will then be dispersed throughout the armor. This works fairly similarly for bullets, except the protection must be a bit more complex. Fundamentally though, it's a similar process. However, these just disperse the force. There will still be some blunt force trauma if the dispersed force is large enough, since the armor will still collide with your body. This may lead to you thinking that armor wouldn't be that effective against an explosion, since the force from an explosion is already dispersed throughout your body and still doing a lot of damage. I also believe this, and it is true that traditional armor like iron or chainmail wouldn't be super helpful. However, there are specific bomb suits that have been shown to be decently effective, as so they use really bulky setups that disperse the explosion outside of the body. Additionally, specifically Kevlar vests have been shown, at least in one study, to lower the mortality rate of pigs in explosion from 100% to 55%. Though, unless you're in America, most people ain't built like pigs, so these stats aren't the most accurate, but still useful data nonetheless. Overall though, using some sort of armor or barrier could easily lower the fatal distance down to 2 or less meters, which would make it even more like in-game. However, for an unequipped human, if a creeper blows up near you, it's highly unlikely you'll survive unless you're built like Steve. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I was pretty surprised by how close to in-game the 16 dynamite estimation was and how much more sense it makes than TNT. If anything surprised you or was interesting, please let me know in the comments. I hope you have a nice day.